This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the 23rd day of September in the year 2019. Here is what we're tracking tonight. The Commonwealth Group of Countries has joined the United States, the United Kingdom, and the European Union in calling on President David Granger to set a date for elections. Now that the Elections Commission has indicated that it will be ready by the end of February next year. In an early morning statement, the Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland urged President David Granger and all relevant stakeholders and institutions to restore constitutional rule in Guyana by immediately setting an early date for elections in consonance with its constitution, enabling elections to be held without any further delay. The Secretary General said she has taken note of the 18th of June 2019 ruling of the Caribbean Court of Justice and its consequential orders of the 12th of July 2019. She said the CCJ's ruling was clear that again the Constitution sets out certain requirements for the time of an election after the valid passing of a no-confidence motion. She said the rule of law and constitutional governance are fundamental Commonwealth values to which Guyana has subscribed. The Commonwealth Secretary General said a general election in Guyana is now constitutionally overdue and the general election should be held in accordance with the unambiguous constitutional imperative to do so. She said she has spoken with the chair of the Guyana Elections Commission and has discussed Commonwealth support to GCOM. President David Granger on Sunday told reporters he will be meeting his cabinet tomorrow to further discuss announcing a date for elections. I already, when I left Pegasus um, Hotel, I went straight into a cabinet meeting. Some ministers were traveling, so we have had the first cabinet meeting, regardless of what other you know, misinformed media outlets said. We have had the first, and it will be coming up again. The Prime Minister was there, Minister of Public Security was there. Minister, the two ministers who were um, affected by the um, hooliganism were there. But the fuller cabinet will meet again on Tuesday. This but they've received, week, I've given them copies. This in week, another, in huh? another. This week? Yes, def this definitely, week? definitely. This is urgent. The president has said it is the Elections Commission and not the executive that is charged with the hosting of elections. He said he will be naming a date soon. President Granger also said he has been following the Constitution and the orders of the Caribbean Court of Justice. More news coming up in just a moment. Hi Ghana, I am Ambika Ramraj, Miss World Ghana 2018 and your GTT Pinktober Ambassador for 2019. Pinktober is GTT's flagship event aimed at raising cancer awareness and facilitating access to support for all Guyanese. In 2017, we raised $4 million. In 2018, we nearly tripled that amount. Thus, we have been able to continue our fight against cancer by providing support to multiple foundations, such as the Giving Hope Foundation and GRPA. This year, our aim is to do even more, but we need your help. Become a corporate sponsor for Pinktober 2019. Visit our website www.gtt.co.gy forward slash Pinktober 2019 for more information on how. GTT is in the business of saving lives, so join us now. Experience bliss in an exclusive atmosphere as Universe Boss Chris Gale celebrates his 40th birthday in Guyana. Yo. Batman out and stunting, Chris Gale can kick like dumpling. 40 Shades of Gale, featuring Kess the Band live and in concert. At the Arthur Chung Conference Center on Saturday, 5th October. Tickets three thousand dollars, general four thousand dollars, stage front ten thousand dollars. Forty shades of Gale. Party with the universe boss Chris Gale and a star studded cast of international cricketers. Forty shades of Gale featuring Cast the Band live and in concert at the Arthur Chung Conference Center on Saturday, 5th October. On across our nation, Guyana, we see. In your lives, the future growing even stronger. GPTI, all eyes on Guyana skies as the voices of our people rise again. GPTI, Guyana's pride is in your eyes. Feel it up and win! 
You heard right. Fuel up at Guy Oil $5,000 or more and enter to win. Tune in to Jumpstart on 94.1 FM Monday and Friday to receive your call to win big. Check Facebook for participating locations and more details. Put that your fuel system, boy. High mileage and performance, boy. Fuel it up and win. Welcome back. The remains of two persons were found yesterday morning as fire investigators and the police went through the debris of an early morning fire that gutted a Chinese supermarket and several other businesses at New Road Freedom Hoop on the west coast of Demerara. The identities of the two persons who perished in the fire have not been ascertained, but they are Chinese nationals according to persons in the area. Police Commander Senior Superintendent Lyndon Lord told News Source that the police were alerted to the fire at 1.50 yesterday morning and immediately summoned the fire service. Yeah, about 1.50 this morning, we received information about the fire on the road um, at the junction. As a result, we summoned the fire service, they arrived. Um, shortly after they went into action and they started to put out the blaze, I think three buildings were completely destroyed. And the fire, as we see, the fire uh, attendants are still uh, doing some work. At least four buildings were completely gutted by the fire. It is suspected that the fire started in the supermarket and quickly spread to the buildings on its left and right. A Chinese restaurant on the right-hand side of the supermarket was gutted, while a popular boutique clothing store and electronics store to the left were also completely leveled by the fire. The fire service was able to use a nearby canal as a water source, and that assisted the firemen in containing the blaze and keeping it away from the nearby Regional Democratic Council office. Persons in the area told news source that at the supermarket where the fire started, some of the Chinese nationals also lived there. One resident said in many instances they would be seen doing their own electrical work and running wires in and around the building. He said it would be no surprise if the fire might have been caused by a faulty electrical issue. The investigation is continuing tonight. While convicted drug kingpin Shahid Roger Khan remains in police custody this evening, two days after being deported to Guyana from the US where he served a 10-year jail sentence for narco trafficking. Over the weekend, Khan was questioned about the murders of political activist Ronald Waddle and boxing coach Donald Allison. Both men were executed. Ronald Waddle was gunned down in front of his house in 2006, while Donald Allison was killed in front of a gym in 2005. It was suspected for years that Roger Khan and the Phantom Gang, which he headed, were responsible for the murders along with several others. Roger Khan's attorney Glenn Hanneman said his client has made it clear that he had nothing to do with the two murders. Police have to do their work and they have a right to investigate whatever evidence they have. They have to follow up everything. I am aware, however, that um, there is no evidence in relation to either of those two matters. And I'm also aware that legal advice was given to the police that there was no evidence upon which any charge could be, um, could be laid. So the only logical thing is, is that they hope to get some sort of evidence from him. News source understands that Roger Khan is likely to face questions on a number of other unsolved cases that were linked to the Phantom Death Squad. He had admitted heading the Death Squad in a full-page advertisement that appeared in one of the daily newspapers while he was on the run from law enforcement more than a decade ago. He had also claimed working closely with the former PP Civic government under the then-president Barra Jagdeo. Mr. Jagdeo, who is now opposition leader, and the People's Progressive Party have always denied Khan's allegations and have repeatedly distanced themselves from the notorious narco kingpin. Roger Khan saved himself from a U.S. trial and instead opted for a plea deal. The contents of his plea deal were never made public. He was once held in Guyana back in 2002 with spy equipment that could listen in on and record telephone conversations. He was never charged for being in possession of the equipment, but it is believed that the equipment was handed back to him to continue his phantom operations during that period. It was also suspected that the fire equipment which he was using was purchased using a letter reportedly from the Minister of Health at the time, Leslie Ramsamy. Ramsamy has always denied any links to the letter, although it carried his signature. Let's tell you now that the President of the Ghana Public Service Union, Patrick Yard, is accusing the Interim Management Committee of the Public Service Credit Union of abusing the funds in the credit union. 
At a press conference today, Mr. Yan revealed that he was forced to write to President David Granger with a number of complaints about the IMC that is in place at the credit union. He complained about employees being hired for the credit union, thereby increasing its wage bill, and money being spent on other major projects without proper approval. So we wrote the president to intervene. His response was encouraging to us. We saw no reason to doubt that the Minister of Public Service, who he deputized, would act professionally. Because it's a new young person. And um, we have no negative information about her. So we thought she would act in a professional manner. So we were waiting on her now to get about this exercise. But lo and behold, notwithstanding this, in conflict with the guidance given by His Excellency, we receive a letter from Keith Scott. President Granger passed on the issue to the Minister within the Ministry of Social Protection for his department's investigation. However, Mr. Yard is of the opinion that the same minister was responsible for the IMC taking over the credit union in the first place, and therefore any probe by him or his department cannot be taken seriously. Executive abuse of authority has taken control of workers' savings deposited at the Guyana Public Service Credit Union Cooperative Limited. This executive abuse began with a carefully orchestrated plan within the Ministry of Social Protection to illegally extract some $50 million from the coffers of the Ghana Public Service Union. Yard said the IMC has been acting in violation of the rules of the credit union and has been utilizing funds in conflict with those rules. He said the funds were accumulated by the displaced management of the credit union over the years in the interest of the members of the credit union. The Working People's Alliance, which is part of the APNU AFC coalition, plans to use its voice in the coalition to push for cash grants to be given out to the country's poor people from the proceeds of oil. The WPA believes that cash transfers to citizens will be well supported and would cater for everyone. At a party press conference on Friday, WPA executive member David Hines said while the other parties in the coalition could put forward various ideas, the WPA intends to stick with the cash transfer position. Everywhere he goes, he talks about education. Presumably, that is a PNC position. So that's their signal position. Our position is cash transfer. And we are saying cash transfer is important to us because it will benefit the poor. And we are a party, we have staked out very clearly. People can fight over the, um, what you all call them, the, the, the local content policy. Um, for oil and we respect that and there are people who are able and capable of dealing with that. People can fight over the contracts and they have been fighting over the contracts. But we're saying in the final analysis, when you finish fighting over your contracts and your local content, those poor people out there want to know what this has to do with us. And we have taken the lead and said, we are going to deal with that. We are going to speak on your behalf. We're going to ask questions on your behalf. And we are going to put policy proposals on the table. Guyana is expected to receive hundreds of millions of U.S. dollars annually when the oil industry takes off. There have been various ideas put forward for the best use of oil proceeds. The Working People's Alliance has been pushing the direct cash transfer idea. And it has been getting support from members of the public. In the courts now, a 35-year-old Baramadang minor was today remanded to prison after he was charged with the murder of his brother-in-law. The accused, Anthony Edwards, was not required to enter a plea to the indictable murder charge. He appeared before the chief magistrate and the charge was read to him. The prosecutor told the court that on the 15th of September, in the Baramadang area, Edwards chopped his brother-in-law Dorian Brown to death as the two got into an argument. The police prosecutor said both men were at a fundraising event in the community and were seen drinking alcoholic beverages for several hours. A loud argument eventually erupted between the two and it was at that stage that it is alleged that the accused armed himself with a cutlass and repeatedly chopped the other man to death. The matter will continue in the month of December. The accused will remain on remand. Across the region is coming up next. Tired of long lines? 
register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. Lights, camera, action. The stars are here again. Friday, October 4th at Bomb Court. It's the annual champion party. Featuring the champion himself, DJ Bravo. Introducing the Caribbean's new pop sensation, Ariella Alexa. A full practice session with GBM Neutron. Music by Trinidad's sexiest DJ, DJ Anna. Along with the boom DJs, Gummy Raz, Selector Diamond, DJ Aquilo, and DJ Hudson. Champion Party, Friday, October 4th at Palm Court. Securing the best healthcare facility for you and your family is important. At Balmain Singh Hospital, we take pride in giving you the best healthcare at unbeatable prices. We offer a 24-hour emergency care, a well-equipped ambulance, the best group of international doctors. Whatever your medical needs are, we are here to make sure you are taken care of like family. From eye care to dental service, the best, most experienced gynecologist, pediatric care, skin care, well-trained radiologist, and a trauma center. Our goal is to get you healthy so you can live a healthier life. Balwan Singh Hospital, caring for you and your family by offering health care at unbeatable prices. Live, love, and enjoy life. Call 226-4279 or visit us at 314 East Street, Georgetown. Balwan Singh, best health care at unbeatable prices. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways. Knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Across the region right now, Colombia's president has compared the Venezuelan president Nicolas Maduro to Serbian war criminal Slobodan Milosevic as he goes on a diplomatic offensive to quarrel the Venezuelan socialist, warning that he would be making a stupid mistake if he were to attack his US-backed neighbor. Ivan Duque made the comments in an interview Saturday with the Associated Press before traveling to New York where he's expected to condemn Maduro before the United Nations General Assembly as an abusive autocrat who is not only responsible for the country's humanitarian catastrophe but is also now a threat to regional stability for his alleged harboring of Colombian rebels. While Duque refused to rule out a military strike against the Marxist rebels he claims are hiding out across the border, he said any aggression by Venezuela's armed forces would immediately trigger a regional response that could include additional sanctions and diplomatic actions. In neighboring Brazil, Brazilian federal police have proposed criminal charges against mining giant Vale and German safety firm Tufsud and 13 of their employees over January's deadly dam collapse. Police reportedly say both firms used falsified documents that said that the Felagio Dam was stable. At least 248 people were killed as a sea of mud engulfed the staff canteen, offices and nearby farms. The collapse was Brazil's worst industrial accident. 22 people are still missing. Seven people from the two companies are being indicted. Vale says it has been made aware of the federal police report. The other company to sued declined to comment. And finally, tonight, international news. At least seven children died after a classroom collapse at the primary school in the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. The wooden structure at Precious Talent Top School collapsed just minutes after the start of the school day earlier today. Dozens of people were injured and taken to a hospital in the city. Rescuers reported that they had a difficulty getting to the school because of the large crowds that gathered nearby. The school's director blamed the collapse on the construction of a nearby sewer, which he said may have weakened the foundations of the building. An investigation is on the way tonight in Nairobi. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.